feeling that there is no Frank Jones piece of Daisy. Her father is too busy with his male nudes to pay much attention to his daughter. And in general, Daisy spends her childhood rather alone. But she's actually a very gregarious, outgoing kid. Daisy would often ask to get her hair cut just because she loved her hairdresser. She would ask neighbors if she could walk their dogs. There was even a family joke about the time Daisy tried to bake a birthday cake for the mailman. So, this is a girl that desperately wants to connect. But there's no one in her life who is truly interested in who she is, especially not her parents. And it really breaks her. But it is also how she grows up to become an icon. We love broken, beautiful people. And it doesn't get much more obviously broken and more classically beautiful than Daisy Jones. So, it makes sense that Daisy starts to find herself on the Sunset Strip, this glamorous, seedy place. Daisy Jones, singer Daisy Jones and the Six. I could walk to the Strip from my house. I was about 14, sick of being stuck in the house, just looking for something to do. I wasn't old enough to get into any of the bars and clubs, but I went anyway. I remember bumming a cigarette off of a roadie for the birds when I was pretty young. I learned quickly that people thought you were older if you didn't wear your bra, and sometimes I'd wear a bandana headband like the cool girls had on. I wanted to fit in with the groupies on the sidewalk with their joints and their flasks and all of that. So I bummed a cigarette from this roadie outside the Whiskey A Go-Go one night, the first time I'd ever had one, and I tried to pretend I did it all the time. I held the cough in my throat and what have you, and I was flirting with him the best I could. I'm embarrassed to think about it now, how clumsy I probably was. But eventually some guy comes up to the roadie and says, we gotta get inside and set up the amps, and he turns to me and he says, you coming? And that's how I snuck into the whiskey for the first time. I stayed out that night until three or four in the morning. I'd never done anything like that before. But suddenly, it was like I existed. I was part of something. I went from zero to 60 that night. I was drinking and smoking anything anybody would give me. When I got home, I walked in through the front door, drunk and stoned and crashed in my bed. I'm pretty sure my parents never even noticed I was gone. I got up, went out the next night, did the same thing. Eventually, the bouncers on the strip recognized me and let me in wherever I was going. The whiskey, London fog, the riot house. No one cared how young I was. Greg McGinnis, former concierge. The Continental Hyatt House. Oh, man. I don't know how long Daisy was hanging around the Hyatt House before I noticed her. But I remember the first time I saw her. I was on the phone and in walks this crazy, tall, crazy, skinny girl with these bangs and the biggest, roundest blue eyes you ever saw in your life, man. She also had this smile. Huge smile. She came in on the arm of some guy, I don't remember who. A lot of the girls around the strip back then, I mean, they were young, but they tried to seem older. Daisy just was, though. Didn't seem like she was trying to be anything, except herself. After that, I noticed she was at the hotel a lot. She was always laughing, there was nothing jaded about her, at least when I knew her. It was like watching Bambi learn how to walk. She was real naive and real vulnerable, but you could tell. There was something about her. Well, I was nervous for her, to tell you the truth. There were so many men in that scene that were into girls, into young girls. Thirty-something rock stars sleeping with teenagers, not saying it was okay, just saying that's how it was. How old was Lori Maddox when she was with Jimmy Page? Fourteen, and Iggy Pop and Sable Star? He sang about it. Man, he was bragging about it. When it came to Daisy, I mean the singers, the guitarists, the roadies.